Maybe I'm just tall. Okay, here I go. Yeah, I can cut it down. <laughs> we'll be fine. We'll be fine. We'll catch you up. So, the title is a little bit of a tribute inside my family. Um, Sarah and I have a nephew that went through a very long phase, probably from the age of, um, uh, what, nine to 17, where everything was whatever. <laughs> Keep that image in your head. But let's pause and have a word of prayer. God, we give you thanks for the gift of your word, for those that sometimes make our lives a little challenging, and the love that you provide to work through that. Help us to hear a word from you in this day, O oh God. Guide our hearts and minds that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts together might be acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Apparently there was a little Play-Doh where I was sitting. <laughs> and my wardrobe manager is taking care of these things. <laughs> and, and, and I give thanks for her every day. Um, so hopefully you still have in your head, because I jumped in too fast, the image of a teenager, a preteen, a late teen, as you ask for an opinion or a response or whatever, and they say, whatever. Which has nothing to do with what Peter was writing. The scripture we encounter today is talking about enthusiasm for the ministries of Jesus Christ and the ministries of the church. And the phrase that jumped out at me as I first started the preparation process and worked its way through all the way through this week was the image of whatever gift you have, use it for the glory of God, loosely translated from what Peter is talking about. Peter calls us to a faith that says not all of us can do everything, but everyone can do something. Now, the dangerous part of that church is sometimes that becomes our excuse. Well, I do all these things which means I don't have to do these other things. That was vague. Let me be more specific. <laughs> you have heard this a number of times from me. Five key core spiritual disciplines. In fact, you've heard it so many times, it's quiz time. Oh, no. Let's see if collectively we can name all five. Prayer. Prayer. Excellent. Bible study. Studying the scriptures. Excellent. Someone besides Alice. <laughs> <laughs> you, you could do all five. I could tell. That's why I was like, okay, I need to hear another one. What? Service. Serving others. Yes, service to others. Perfect. Giving thanks. Worship. Uh, yeah, kind of, but we use a different term. Expand that a little bit. Worship. Worship. There we go. <laughs> Like you said it first. I just want to make sure she gets it. <laughs> Who said it? Like you said it first. What'd you say? <laughs> oh, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. I make sure she gets you first. spoke to my left ear, which is um, obviously. Never mind, I'm not going to get myself in trouble. That's four. The last one's really easy. It's kind of the theme of the day giving. Giving. <laughs> and it's always, always, always the last one that people come up with. I wonder why. And I have to confess that over my years of Christian development, it's become my favorite of the spiritual disciplines. Not that Giving, especially if money is tight, is necessarily all that fun. You know why it's my favorite? It's really easy. 
Right? Prayer takes time and effort. Worshiping takes time and effort. Studying the Bible takes time and effort. Serving others takes a lot of time and effort. Giving is easy. I don't even write a check anymore. I punch some buttons on my phone and magically my bank takes care of it. Now, it doesn't always take care of it on the timeline I would like for it to, but that's another story. I made the mistake of saying to Dick one time, I do my tithe on the first of every month. And he said, no, you don't. <laughs> and I said, yeah, I do. I, I do it then. And he said, yeah, that's not when we get it. And I was like, well, hopefully you get it by the second Sunday. He goes, no, nope, not always. And I appreciate it. I'm, I'm, I'm having fun with it, but I appreciate it. Because it actually gave the ability to call the, my bank and say, hey, why is this taking so doggone long? You know, why is it taking so long to get from A to B? And uh, they said, well, we turn them in X number of hours, blah, blah, blah. So then I called Carol and said, well, if the bank says this, when my stuff comes in, and you can tell by what bank it's from, I, I kind of want to know what it was postmarked. You know what? Metered mail doesn't get a postmark anymore. <laughs> that was a flawed assumption on my part. <laughs> Um, so, you know, there are several things that affect the ability of my gift for the church to get from my bank account to the church itself. And one of those is how long it takes the bank to write the check. Another is how long it takes to get delivered to the P.O. box. Another is how frequently we check the P.O. box. And then finally, the translation from that into the plate. I'm still not willing to pull out a checkbook because, frankly, I'm not sure where it is. <laughs> it hasn't been online, right? I may not be alone in this, but uh, um, I can't tell you where my checks are for sure. I think I know, but I never use them. Everything is electronic. And in our electronic digital age, that means we expect everything to be instant. And that swerves into the whatever I really wanted to talk to you about today. And that is the expectation we have as a society that when we give, God will immediately bless us and it will move as fast as electronic banking. <laughs> and I wish Alice had laughed really loudly. I knew someone would. <laughs> because we all know better. But we know those blessings come. We laugh a little about that because they don't come on our timeline. But that doesn't mean they're not there. Which is an important distinction to say God does not look at our spiritual exercises and say, whatever. God never gets tired of the gifts you present to God. Not just the financial ones, but the gift of spending time in prayer, the gift of spending time in worship, the gift of studying God's Word. Wow, what better flattery is that than to study the Word? The gift of serving others in the name of God. God celebrates those, gives thanks for them. God, every time you exercise your spiritual disciplines, God goes, yes! Thank me! Because God can't really say thank God, can he? That'd be weird. <laughs> kind of redundant. <laughs> and every day we practice those systematically, not unlike exercising our physical muscles which, hmm, let's pick on Robert. When we exercise our physical muscles, we get... There's one word I'm looking for here, buddy. Come on, don't fail me. Stronger! And when we exercise our spiritual muscles, when we exercise our prayer, when we exercise our study of the Word, when we exercise serving others, when we exercise and practice worshiping, when we give generously, we get stronger in our faith. Practicing spiritual disciplines is one of the most selfless and selfish things you can do. Wait, what? 
Practicing your spiritual disciplines is one of the most selfless and selfish things you can do. Why is it selfish? Because it benefits you. I'm going to let you in on a little secret that stewardship chairs absolutely hate. Dick, you might want to close your ears for this one. God doesn't need your money. The creator of the universe who made all things has no understanding of a U.S. currency. Sorry. There's a few people that need to hear that in higher <laughs> office, but that's not the subject for here. What God desires more than anything is your heart. And what did Jesus say about your heart? Where your treasure is, there your heart shall be also. We give because we believe in the ministry of Jesus Christ, in the ministry of this church, in the actions we're trying to do, not only those that we have done, but the things that God is calling us to do. And we pray for all of those things. And we praise God when we have the opportunity to do new ministries. When we get the chance to serve others. When we get the chance to show Christ's love. Christian faith is not a whatever kind of faith. It's a dig down deep, figure out what you can do, and then do a little more kind of thing. So at the risk of trademark infringement, let's just do it. Amen. Amen.